Hello and welcome to Take Another Look. I'm your host, Tony Della Flora. The City of Albuquerque's Urban Enhancement Trust Fund celebrated its 30th anniversary last year. Since its creation, the city has spent millions to fund scores of art and cultural events and improve our quality of life. With me today to talk about the history of the program and the upcoming funding cycle are Public Art and UETF Program Manager Sherry Brueggemann and UETF Coordinator Matt Carter. Thank you guys for being here. I know it's going to get to be very busy here very soon. Yes, very. Yeah. Um, so Sherry, I wanted to, for people who don't know about the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund, how did that get started? Sure. Um, back in 1982, the uh, state of New Mexico um, filed a lawsuit against the United States government um, seeking back owed gross receipts taxes from all the construction that happened at uh, Sandia Laboratories in Kirtland Air Force Base. And they were successful in that lawsuit and uh, there was a large chunk of money that came in to both the state and the city because that's how gross receipts works. And so basically there was about $8.2 million okay. that came into the city coffers and the city council at the time was really very forward thinking and instead of just kind of spinning it all right at one time, um, they put $6.3 million of that into a trust fund mm -hmm. to actually grow and um, be able to uh, fund arts and cultural projects and at the time some little, you know, capital projects like parks, pocket parks and those okay. kinds of things. And um, also only by using the interest. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about, the, um, you, you mentioned that, that this fund is unique. A lot of cities have funds that fund arts and cultural events, but this is the only one that's really kind of a public foundation in a sense. Exactly. Most cities, especially cities our size, basically have a line item in the general fund that they use to do grants or put out uh, contracts for services for arts and culture. But here in Albuquerque, the trust fund is what generates the money. So all of the interest earnings um, uh, that are generated by the trust fund, well actually, I'm sorry, 10, 90 percent of the interest earnings okay. generated by the trust fund are what are used to fund the arts and cultural right. organizations. Ten percent goes back into the fund itself, so the fund is always growing. Okay. Well, how much uh, in the three decades, how much money has been dispensed in grants over that time and how many groups have, have received funding? Since that time, uh, the trust fund has put out 15 point five million dollars into arts and cultural activities um, and some of these capital improvements from the early years. It's funded well over 120 different organizations. Obviously over time the organizations come back and apply for more funds, but it's thousands and thousands of events and activities that it's funded over those 30 years. Give me an idea of some of the um, the range of things that it's funded over time. I'm oh, sure people have been to most of these events. but Well, the flamenco and mariachi festivals, um, okay. genealogy projects, looking at the history of our community, walking tour maps of downtown, poetry books, uh, visual art exhibitions and catalogs, workshops for kids, lots of programs for kids, jazz workshops, classical music, opera workshops for kids and adults, um, arts and crafts for seniors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all over the place. Anything yeah. that's cultural yeah. in our community. I want to come back to that uh, the term cultural about what that's meaning now but um, Matt we're about you're you're gonna be on top of this you we're about to enter, enter a new funding cycle for yeah. UETF and um, let's start with the question that probably all the organizations have on their minds how much money is actually out there this year <laughs> this year uh, we're gonna be able to award three hundred thousand dollars okay uh, for funding okay and that's a two year that's over two years um, okay. It's a two-year cycle, so. Um, All right. So typ typically, how many groups get funded, and what's the average grant? Uh, typically, it depends. Uh, you know, on average, we get about 20, 20, 23 to 26 groups will get funded. Now, we get a lot more applications than are able to be funded, but uh, right. the last couple of cycles, it's been averaging around uh, about 23 to 26 groups. Okay. Um, and, and the uh, average amount for funding is roughly around ten to twelve thousand dollars. Okay. Um, All right. Um, not something that's going to necessarily fund your organization for the year, but yeah. again, to be able to put on a specific series of events or whatever. That yeah. Kind of thing. Well, yeah, because UETF is really geared to be not the sole source for funding. 
Right. So, you know, it, we're de definitely looking to have other funders come in and help help those groups out. So. Okay. Well, under under the heading of arts and culture, you said there's there's five main categories. What are those? Um, yeah. Well, there's actually there's actually six. Six. Um, okay. But uh, you know, I went back and I did some homework before we got here to make sure we got it all correct. But okay. we're looking at the visual arts, uh, music, dance, theater, literature, and history. Okay. And so the, so if your organization kind of mission and kind of what you fits within those categories, you know, we highly encourage you to. Yeah. To apply. Yeah. Well, to to get back to the previous question, we 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 use the term culture, mm -hmm. and that's sort of expanding. Uh, the the selection committee has a little broader um, meaning for that. What tell, well, tell me what the, what might be included this year that maybe wasn't in. One of years. the things that they're sort of uh, talking about. Um, is sort of this idea of creativity and innovation. There certainly is a lot of um, uh, positive energy in the air here in Albuquerque right now about um, innovation and blending arts and culture and science and technology and um, uh, developing new innovative ideas of uh, being creative and bringing that creativity to to audiences. So I think this year the, the committee is really excited about being able to support that. So mm -hmm. um, it's really important to make sure that we have a stable of sort of the traditional art forms that people can have access to. Right. But as we as a community are growing and evolving, we want to make sure that we're supporting really new innovative types of art projects and mm -hmm. cultural projects as well. Okay. And you, I think you might have mentioned before when we talked, like food trucks, per, for, for instance, might be part of the, I mean, considered culture. I, I, don't know about, well, I don't know about food trucks per se, but there's a whole culture around being a foodie in a way. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, That's... so I mean, so one way of that could be something, could be some type of food festival or some type of thing along okay. that line that's going to celebrate that genre or, or okay. that so part of our that culture. Part of our right. culture. Yeah. Okay. So. We, we do still have to fund nonprofit organizations right. that um, have the sort of the mission and purpose, arts and cultural mission and purpose. But if those kinds of organizations are looking to reach out and bring in sort of these new elements of, of our community in, in that way, then yeah. you know, we can fund them. Okay. Yeah, I wanted, that was my next question was about the, the qualifications that these groups must meet. They don't necessarily have to be a nonprofit. They can partner with one or how does that work? Yeah, they can, they could go to an established nonprofit and the, that nonprofit could agree to, to, to um, endorse that. And so that project will be as a pass through organization, be used as a pass through. There's also the idea of fiscal sponsorship. Yeah, fiscal. So other organizations that can um, receive the funds on their behalf. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, let's let's talk about that. What can the funds be used for, and what can't they be used for? Okay. Um, uh, they can be used for um, the project to help fund the project. Uh, UETF does not fund operational costs. Okay. So that would mean like your your rent on your building, your phone lines, your your okay. paper for your, your utility, you can't, you know, you can't use any of that for that. But if you are a um, arts organization that might be offering um, scholarships <coughs> or something like that for, for people to attend that, you know, thing, it could be used for that, it could be used for um, to, whatever to put on that project per se, you know, the cost that might in, in be incurred to put on that project. It, it can't be used to purchase equipment yeah. or other oh, type right. of capital expenditures. Okay. So funding artists, great. Buying a new projection system, no. Renting one, you could. But you <laughs> yes, can, renting. You could rent one. If it's related okay. to the project, yeah. yes, but yeah. no. Buying Okay, no. okay. Well, so um, what, what tips in general would you give people, uh, organizations applying uh, for a UETF grant? What should they put in there and what should they not put in there? Well, I think what they need to do, they need to um, make sure that they address the areas that are going to be asked in the application itself. There is an application that they'll have, so which is going to be a description of your project. It's going to have information on the key players that are going to be involved with it. There's going to be a, there's a section for budget, and that's probably the, the most important thing out of the application okay. is to make sure that you list uh, a breakdown of the budget, what UETF funds are going to be used for and what other in-kind or what other type of funds that you're going to be getting uh, mm -hmm. to be used for. So I think that is probably the best tip. And also to be very um, 
uh, clear in what you're wanting, asking funding for. Um, we've the committee's worked really hard in trying to streamline the application so there's not a lot of repeat information mm -hmm. throughout the whole application from previous applications in the past. You, you, some sections kind of double up on each other. So, right. so I had filled one out many years ago. It was a little complicated. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so I mean, I think those are probably the key. And the other key is, and if you if you are a new organization that's never done it before pick up the phone and give us a call. We're Absolutely. more than willing to, yeah. to uh, talk you through it, kind of give you some advice and, and kind of, okay. you know. So uh, when, when does the application period actually start and where do people get a hold of applications? Okay. Well, the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to have an informational meeting. We're going to have two informational meetings that we're going to be held at the South Broadway Cultural Center. Okay. Uh, the first one's going to be on April 22nd at 4 p.m. Okay. And then the second one is going to be on April 23rd at 11 a.m. And those were high, the committee and, and I think I would also highly encourage any of the organizations that are interested in applying to attend those informational meetings because that's where we're going to kind of walk them through the application, talk about the criteria, talk about, you know, the funding and, and how this, how it's all going to play out and, and, and everything. And so um, the deadline for the application will then be June 20th. Okay. Uh, 2014, and you can get the application online. Uh, you'll be downloadable, and it'll be relatively within a few days after the April those two April sessions. It, it'll be posted on the the UETF website for download. Okay. But if they attend the workshop sessions, they'll get a sneak preview of the application. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I know that you. One thing you said the committee was was looking at. Sort of helping um, emerging artists this year. I mean, we've, you've got groups that have come back every year and asked for it and often mm -hmm. get, get funded, but mm -hmm. you're looking to expand that pool too. You want some new blood in there, I think. Well, I think that we're certainly encouraging uh, as, as many different organizations and artist um, groups as possible to apply. I mean, it's uh, really about, again, kind of going back to the name of what, what it is, the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. How can we enhance this sort of urban culture in Albuquerque by supporting as much diverse and creative mm -hmm. um, opportunities as, as we can? One of the most important things about what we fund is that they're usually, you know, they have to be available to the public to experience. So if there's in interesting creativity happening sort of under the surface that we need to bring out and make sure more people have access to right. it, then that's, that's yeah. I think, what we're going to be looking for. Yeah. Okay. We just have a couple minutes left. I wanted to, uh, if you could uh, tell us, how long does the selection process take and when do those <laughs> funds actually <laughs> okay. become available? Well, we kind of have a, we've, we posted on our website kind of a general uh, kind of schedule for the thing. So, th obviously, the, the applications will be to due on June 20th uh, at 4 p.m. in the cultural services offices via email or hand delivered. From there you're looking at, you know, there's going to be a couple, about a month for staff to kind of review, make sure everything's going on. And then we're looking at, um, you know, fall, fall for the committee to review. Okay. And then in the spring, uh, the city council has to approve and kind of go through the process for the, allocating the funds. And then funds will be available July 1st. 2015 mm -hmm. uh, based on an executed, well funds will be available and then organizations will be able to uh, have access to those funds if they've been awarded uh, after an executed contract has been established for okay. the city. So we know it's a really long process but it's uh it's very thorough. Okay, good, yes. good, good to hear. When uh, we we got to go here in just a second, but where can people find out more information about uh, applying for? Uh, this funding cycle? Uh, the, the UETF website, which is cabq.gov slash UETF. And that'll have a history, it has a history of the program. It also has uh, examples of past organizations, current and past organizations, going back to very to the beginning, um, how to apply, who's, you know, okay. meet the committee, meet the staff, that type of stuff. So. Great. Great. And they can call you, too. And they can call me okay. as well. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you guys for being here today. Um, this is a great program, and, and I'm sure we, you know, we could get hundreds of testimonials from, from organizations who have benefited from this. But uh, it was great we had such a, a forward-looking city council yep. back 30 years ago. Absolutely. So. Well, anyway, well, I want to thank you for joining us on Take Another Look, and we will see you next time.